Okay, we will get started because I want to have y'all out of here uh, in a fair timeline. Uh, so thank you for coming. This workshop is titled The Writing Process and Community. And so a lot of us are aware of like word counts and the final products that we have to submit at the finish line of the paper. Um, but if we can start to conceptualize some of the steps that get us there, it also opens us up to think about who are the people who help us write the best paper along the way. Um, and this, for me, is something that I've been learning this year because in undergrad, all that I did was like I sat down alone and wrote a paper and then I gave it to two people and said, read for grammar and fix it. And that was that. Um, and I am more and more aware that everything I do is an expression of communities of people who surround me. And so how can we make that a conscious part of our process instead of uh, just kind of moving along there? So. Briefly, uh, just an overview of the writing process. You are doing these five things, but you might not be saying, I am now consciously entering the drafting stage. You just do it. So in the pre-writing stage, you're going to consider your purpose and your audience. You're going to think about the requirements of the assignment. You're going to brainstorm ideas. You're going to select a topic, and you're going to create a topic. In the drafting phase, this is when you're finally putting down prose on paper. You're writing your paragraphs out. You're developing a first draft, making sure that your main idea is there, your supporting details are there, and then you keep repeating the stage as necessary. The third stage is revising, which is incorporating changes based on outside feedback. You want to clarify your main ideas, you'll often refine your thesis statement, you're going to improve your organization, you're going to finesse word choices to make your points as strongly as possible, you're going to repeat this stage as needed. Proofreading and editing is just going to be a kind of grammatical pass on the paper, and then publishing for you means hitting that beautiful submit assignment button <laughs> on campus, and then not thinking about it for a little while. Throughout the presentation, as we look at each of these stages in the writing process, we're going to look at these different levels of community. So first, there is the individual. What are the best practices for yourself at each stage of the writing process? Then community means the actual relationships that you have. And then we're going to look at institutional resources because Pandler has people whose job it is to make your paper the best that it can be. And so we want to make sure that you are aware of those at every stage. First is pre writing. And I call this bounded brainstorm. So the world is not your oyster. You cannot do whatever you want when you look at the assignment. But you can set some boundaries and think within them to have your most productive thoughts. So at an individual level, from the moment you get your syllabus, free writing has begun. Mm -hmm. On day one of the semester, you are already in the writing process. So a best practice, create a note in your app or your notebook and just paste the prompt at the top. Because then you've already prepped your brain so that when you're reading that random assigned reading in the second week of class, you're saying, this is resonating with me more deeply than I expected. And you can put that in your note and you know exactly where to go back to later. At the community level, your professor is going to be a huge uh, person of community through lectures, even what course material they're standing out to you. Your peers are a helpful uh, 
place to do this kind of work. Uh, I know because I've had class with most of you. Conversation doesn't end at the time that you have to leave the classroom. So what are you and your friends still asking questions about after class? And then authors, what ideas are shaping you? At the institutional level, we have the reference librarians who are gonna connect you to the best sources. And we have the writing center tutors. My best appointments as a writing center tutor happen in the pre-writing stage mm -hmm. because you have so many ideas. You have all of this course content. And what you do when you bring that to a writing tutor is we become the guardrails and we say, you're really passionate about this. The prompt doesn't allow this, but if you bring it in this way, you can. So we become uh, a, an important piece of refining your point before you even start writing. So I want to just invite you uh, quickly, think back to the prompt that was on the board at the beginning. So the prompt was, what drink is the official sponsor of a seminary education? Is it coffee? Is it tea? Is it energy drinks? Or is it water? Where is your boat among those? And what in your experience, reason, or tradition informs your decision? Yes, I'm a good Wesleyan. Your scripture for papers is all of the secondary sources. So dress those as you will. But um, does anyone have an immediate thought? What is the official drink sponsor? Kim, I knew you would have a thought. Um, as a Candler student, I'm afraid I have to say Coca Cola. Okay. <laughs> so, Kim, is the sponsor Susan, uh, that they are. And Going with Coca Cola. Process of elimination is shouldn't be energy drinks because scientific studies show those are terrible for your health and your anxiety and so, everything about your life. Okay, so Taylor thinks that this institution of higher education needs to be beholden to science, and so she's not a fan of the question that science can't go to us. Whoa, I'm gonna hide. They think they're not friends. Yeah, it didn't do that. Any other thoughts? <laughs> I want to say coffee, just because I have heard people talk about wanting them to put a coffee shop into Candler mm -hmm. so that people in Candler don't have to go walk in. It would be always packed. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> and also, every time I go back, I always see someone at the bottom or with Starbucks <laughs> or something. So now I'm going to say broadly it's coffee, but for me, it's tea. I drink so much tea. I bring like little to go tea because it also keeps me well hydrated, which coffee does not. Yes, that is true. So I suspected we would have a broad split, but in the process of even just sharing a flippant opinion about energy drinks, you are already bringing in all of the experience and outside sources that are getting you thinking about that prompt. So on to the next phase, drafting. Here you want to establish your main idea and supporting details. That's the one sentence mission statement of a draft. Individually, if possible, draft in a writing group Disciplined writing groups can be helpful forums for constructing an argument well the first time. So your community, four to six peers, preferably with mixed backgrounds, interests, and vocational goals, include folks who are not theologically trained. Your grandmother might be somebody who has something really important to say for the kind of paper you're going to write. Um, I think about Dr. Kemp and how often his grandmother figures into the conversations that he has here at Candler. At the institutional level, professors and the TA are the masters of concept. If you don't understand what the word transubstantiation means, they are the people who tell you that. The writing center can't help with that. 
The research librarians can't help with that. Defining key terms is up to your professors or your TA. Writing center tutors help you define your voice. So it's not going to be the best paper that you can write if you keep saying, well, I think this, and maybe, maybe this is also true. We're going to help you make your point as strongly as possible. And the reference librarians will help you find additional sources. So I want you to think about this energy drink, coffee, tea, water question. And just in groups with the people around you, I'm not going to split you up formally. Talk about what kinds of people you want to surround yourself with to form the best argument for what's happening for, for the energy drink or the drink sponsor. Um, so energy drink isn't even my answer, so I don't know why I keep slipping up. But just in small groups for two minutes, talk about who would you want to surround yourself with in order to write the best argument in response to the question. So, like, Okay, y'all take 15, 20 seconds, finish up your thought. Okay, it's pretty quiet. What what are your answers? Who are some of the people that you want to surround yourself with when answering this prompt? So we have to have a counter argument of some sort. So you're not going to want people who have all the same opinions. So you need people who can like care for the weaknesses of what you have to say. Yeah. So if you are a tea person, you want a coffee person at the table with you. Yeah. Albert? And then you can and so maybe everyone can do that. Taylor? Taylor, yeah. Uh, I would want Taylor to be in my group. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Something against him. I yes, I know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> so by us. I mean, I was just talking about the fact that um you might also need to go on a transition to the um the various items. So if you okay. have someone who used to do copy and then they move to tea because of X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have people who really used to do energy drink and have their transition to the one yeah. because of X, Y, and Z. So movement is a valuable resource. Um, that is really helpful. Some of my thoughts on this question. I might want to talk to somebody who is a uh, second career or non-traditional end of student, someone who is coming back to do ministry as a second career, because there might be people who they grew up and did their undergraduate education before energy drinks were near what they are today. And so they might bring a valuable perspective. Or somebody, I have um, helped 
things that make it not possible to drink a lot of coffee. And so I tend towards tea, except for my one cup in the morning. So how does my experience with my body shape the way that I answer this question? Um, taking it out of this silly question, if you're in a biblical studies track and you want to be a Bible scholar, you need to be drafting with a theologian who's going to say, yeah, but if you say this, the church is going to do this and hurt people. Uh, and if you're a theologian, you need to be talking to sociologists and folks who are able to expose your inherent biases. At this earliest stage of writing, these differences become really important for your conversation. Um, so this is, for me, this is my house. We sit and we write together, and then we have conversation about what we're writing. Um, but we also know how to be quiet while we're writing if it's not on, the on top. Revising. Refine by incorporating feedback. Revising requires others. So at an individual level, you want to identify two respected peers or friends in the class and exchange papers. And then you want to give these peers total freedom to critique the paper. They are there to help you get better. And so they are not making the final judgment that you don't want to get from the professor um, without a good revising process. Your community, two respected peers, not the best peers, but the most aligned with your goals and ideas. So I, as someone who is considering doing PhD work, I am not necessarily going to go to somebody who wants to be a United Methodist pastor. Not because they're wrong, but because they're going to look at it and they're going to say, I couldn't preach this. Right, right. And so I want to look for people at this stage who understand what I'm moving towards with my paper. Um, so this is going to be a just brief silent reflection. Um, so you do not have to talk to each other or the introverts in the room. Reflect on your qualifications for respected peers. What are your broader goals for your seminary education? What kinds of peers will help you to grow the most towards your academic goals? Take some time to think about that. I do also want to note that this is a helpful exercise at the beginning of any class, because an ethics class will fit into pastoring different than a biblical studies class. And so asking this in new ways for each class is important, but you can also identify some of these broader trends in your head. Okay, now I'm just gonna give you 30 more seconds. Think about one class you are in this semester and identify who these two people are for you in that class. Okay. Your institutional resource during this time is the writing center. This is the final stage of the writing process where the writing center should be involved. So we're actually supposed to turn away asks for us to be a mere proofreaders. Our goal is not to help you get a grade by hitting all of the right grammar marks. Our goal is to help you discover your voice. 
And so we can't do that in the proofreading phase. This is the final stage where the writing center is involved. One way that we can be involved, big picture help. For this, you need to send your paper in advance of the meeting so that your tutor can familiarize themselves with your argument. So big picture help is, I'm just not sure that my three supporting ideas equal my argument. And I need someone else to tell me it does or it does not. Then there's hyper-focused help. Bring two to three representative paragraphs so that your tutor can help you develop a clear and concise voice. We can't look at an entire paper in 30 minutes or in an hour. I've had people bring stuff for an hour and we get through three paragraphs. So if you can identify, this is representative of my struggle, these two paragraphs, it helps us to do the most productive work. Proofreading and editing. This is about details and format. At an individual level, the best practice for proofreading is to read out loud to yourself, listening more than reading. So you will pick up on things that sound wrong, even if on paper, your brain doesn't see them issue. So reading out loud to yourself listening more than reading. Your community for this, you want to find one master of the language in which you are writing. This person does not need to know your subject or be tied to Canada. So apart from like the most technical of terms, this person, nouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs work the same in a simple sentence as they do in a complicated sentence. This person does not need to be a Candler student. At the institutional level, your primary health care is the reference librarians, and they have appointments available specifically to help you with citations and forming your final bibliography. Um, so they are available to do that. The writing center is not. This is gonna be another introverted reflection. Think about the people in your life, even those beyond Candler, who you could trust with this role. And on top of that, think even more how they might be honored or excited to get a glimpse of what you are learning here in the process of reading. There are a lot of people who have a lot invested in you and who love you, who don't know anything that's happening while you're here in Atlanta. So this can actually be a way to honor somebody and say, you were really helpful in my undergrad. You have always been my favorite uh, English tutor, helper, whatever. Would you be willing to help with this? while I'm at, at Candler. Finally, publishing and submission, the big, beautiful, and scary button on Canvas or on the printer uh, if you still have professors who require that. <laughs> Your communal task here is to celebrate. And more specifically, find some way to show appreciation to the community that helped you along the way. Psychologists have done all of the work on gratitude. And I think that we're probably familiar with it as seminary students. But taking the time to make a card or to send an email might just make those people's days a little brighter. It might make their dark cave of their own paper writing <laughs> slightly illuminated. Um, but this is something that can be unique 
to each paper. It can also be something if you develop a form of I always send cards. Um, whatever that is, don't take for granted the people who got you across the finish line. We could all do with more celebration. And with that, thank you very much for coming today uh, and for participating. Are there any are there any questions or thoughts that you would like to share to supplement this to counter it and argue against me? Whatever y'all want to do. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you for coming and we'll conclude there.